Akshay, we'll just wait for two minutes. Okay, we'll start the class. Let the people join. Okay, actually, we will not wait for some time. We will continue, okay? Uh, I will just put in more screen presenting. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, hope just one confirmation again. Is the screen visible? Okay. Yeah. So uh, in the previous class, we just studied about the sick child and the weight PID API. So what does this do is whenever, as I said, whenever there is a child process and parent process creates a child process. So whenever a child terminates or stop, parent is notified saying that child has terminated or stopped. So in that case, parent can take either of the actions, which we discussed in the previous class, just a brush up for your parent can ignore the signal. It can catch the signal or it can perform the default action, right? So this was what we said in the previous class. So in today's class, we'll study about SIG set the jump and SIG long jump. Now, if you can recall this, we had said about set jump and long jump somewhere, right? So SIG set jump and SIG long jump is similar to the functions that of set jump and long jump APIs. Now we know where set jump and long jump can be used. Set jump and long jumps are used for unconditional branching statements. That means to jump from one function to another function. Go to will do the same task, but within the function. But if at all you want to work or jump across the function, we go for set jump and long jump. So in similar lines, we have signal set jump and signal long jump, which means that it allows you to jump from one function to another function not only jump, but also pass the signal. Not only give the control, but also pass the signal from one function to another function. So they're used to transfer control from one function to another. Hence, they're also called as non-local go-to statements. As I said very well, non-local go-to statements is nothing but they are the unconditional branching statements. They also are something like go-to only, but they jump across the functions. So they are called as non-local go to function again set jump and sorry six set jump and six long jump are found in set jump dot h header file and the syntax is again it is similar to set jump and long jump only there is just one difference over there which you'll understand see. six set jump six set jump jump pb the first argument says that initially whenever six set jump is encountered for the very first time the jm pb variable will be a zero. That means you have not come from long jump. You are visiting it directly. And the extra arguments, you see in set jump, we have only one argument, whereas in long jump, we have two arguments. Similarly here, set jump has one more argument that is save signal mask. So what does it do here is it not only takes you from long jump to set jump, but also saves the signal mask, which is carried forward from the long jump. And long jump has again two parameters. The first one, which says that whenever a long jump is encountered, it jumps to this variable wherever six set jump is set. And this retrieval value is nothing but 
the value which is coming from long jump here which says that whenever a long jump is encountered you have to directly jump from this long jump function to the sig set jump that is what is told here see the sig set jump behaves similar to set jump except that it has a second argument save signal mask which allows a user to specify whether a calling process signal mask should be saved to the provided env argument or not so here now whenever long jump is going from this function to this it is not only jumping but it is also passing the signal so this argument tells whether the signal which is coming from long jump should be saved or should be ignored similarly sig long jump does the same operation as that of long jump that means whenever it is encountered it takes you to the location where set jump is said and it also restores the calling process signal mask if the mask was saved in env argument so it not only does that but also saves it from this location to the sig set jump function as i said the rt val value specifies the return value of the corresponding sig set jump api when it is called from signal long jump and its value should be a non zero number that means whenever the sig set jump is encountered for the first time its value is zero but whenever it is called from the long jump its value becomes a positive so it is said its value should be a non zero number that means sig set jump if the value of sig set jump is non zero that means it has come from a long jump system call that means it is not only used to pass the control but also to pass the signals from one function to another i can just show you how exactly this works here just look at this part for this i have written the code also here so what did i do here is i have written a sample code for set jump and long jump see again these are two different functions which i have written to call the signals okay so in main i am pass calling six set jump okay so initially what i said it should be a non zero value but since set jump six set jump is called from the main for the very first time its value is zero which is not equal to zero right so this is not true so else so once it falls it directly will not execute this part this is never executed it comes to this part so what it prints now six set jump has been called now initial this is see if you look in the textbook it is very complicated example but this will help you to understand the things so this will come here is been called then you are calling a function p then the control goes to the function where p is encountered now p is here comes here this is just an error definition which i have defined the error initially now sig long jump mark minus 1 that means whenever this function is called it directly goes to the point where sig set jump is encountered so where it is sig set jump is encountered it is encountered here now again it comes here sees whether it is not equal to 0 true because now it has come from long jump true then it comes here it prints sig long jump has been called then you are calling a function recover this is nothing just like a signal passing where you are passing a recover where nothing is written after that again it returns to this function and you are exiting it so same thing like a set jump and long jump only okay now see how this works see as i said sig long jump is never executed because it is a zero that comes here sig jump has been called after this you have called a function p where the control goes to p function where you have defined sig long jump so the main whenever sig long jump is encountered it jumps from that location to the point where sig set jump is set now this is a non zero so enters this function displays this message sig long jump has been called and call the function recover which does nothing just it's a swapping switching between the processes which have written it then you are exiting it so this is how your sig set jump and sig long jump are executed okay the next are this is very simple concept over here abort function we have seen this in the 
unix process also see normal termination and abnormal termination so abort function causes abnormal program termination so if your program is going in infinite loop or if it is not executing you can always call the abort system call now abort system call what it does it causes abnormal program termination abnormal means some resources are already attached to the process but still without releasing those resources you are terminating the process so this function never returns very important abort function will never return anything so only it is void and argument is void so what does this function do now this function sends the sig abort signal to the caller process so which is the caller process for that it sends the sig abort signal and what does the processor should do now a process should not ignore this signal because abort and kill are the signals which a process can't ignore which i told initially only and what does it do now at any point of time whenever this system call is encountered it aborts the process this is as a syntax for you to understand over there then very important system api or system function i'll tell you the example of this exactly here in the coding part this is the coding part here okay just i'll come back to this just give me 2 minutes i'll just close this okay i'll go to the project i'll open a recent project system okay so initially i'll just minimize this also i'll just show you the demonstration part here exactly now look at this you know there is a unix terminal and you can execute commands at the terminal for example <coughs> sorry if i want to know which all the files are there in my system we know the command ls ls is nothing but long listing of files you have again pwd which is present working directory you have cal which shows the calendar right so these are the commands which you can execute at the terminal now my next question is if at all i want to execute those commands in a program okay if i want to execute those commands in a program i have written i have written a code i'll come here i'll just type ls now the next thing is it's a command i know because ls executed at the prompt but now when i try to run this i try to run this you are getting something here error see here error ls undeclared why because the commands which you can run at the prompt will lose its relevance in the source code please understand this the commands which can execute at the prompt will lose its relevance in the source code see here if i say pwd i know present working directory but again when i run this it says that pwd undeclared now here what it takes it takes it as an variable itself so now the next question is if at all you want to execute a command in a source code see understand it if at all you want to execute a command in the source code then we make use of system api or the system system call see system is a function or it is a system call only so how exactly it works int it writes an integer value on execution system and the argument is command so whichever command you want to execute in the code please remember this i'm telling it again and again your commands will execute at the prompt go so here i'll minimize this i'll come to the terminal see here pwd is a command i know that it got executed you have ls is a command which got executed you have cal as a command which got executed right so all these are commands which are executing at the prompt but the same command will lose its relevance when you are executing in a source code 
so the next concept what you are learning is the system function or system api itself so this function return is minus 1 on error so if you pass something which is not a command then it writes minus 1 but if you pass a proper command it writes a non zero now what does the system do it executes a command specified as a command argument specified as a command argument and what happens during this execution during the execution of the command the sig child signal will be blocked and sig interrupt and sig quit will be ignored very clear it is whenever a system api is called it executes the command specified in it so whenever it is executing the child process whichever is being created is blocked till this execution completes apart from that it also ignores the interrupt and sig quit that means whenever the system call is executed you can neither interrupt the process you can neither quit the process and the child will be blocked and how this executes in this way now see here. i said pwd you can't execute but i can execute pwd i can execute the present working directory in the system call now in the system call now see we know pwd is a present working directory now when i do this it shows me the present working directory see root slash system slash source even if you want to execute the calendar cal i'll run this it shows me the calendar of the system which is specified okay now which are you want it can be showing that calendar for me okay i want listing of files ls now it will show me make file system o dot because you are in the run mode and in my virtual box there are no files available for me so similarly if i type now something i will type my name now my name is not a command okay please remember this my name is not a command so what should be on the output screen now command not found an error whenever it writes minus 1 it shows that command not found so got this students what the main thing i wanted to say here is system is a system so let me go okay system is an function or an api which executes a command in the source code now down the line you will be doing some mini projects also where you want to execute some commands in the source code at that time you can use the system api or system function system function is used to execute a command in the source code the only thing to understand here is whenever the system api is being executed the child process is blocked and sig interrupt and sig quit signals are ignored for us okay and there is something as sleep function which we all know now which we have used it also sleep function is nothing but sleep is used to make the process halt or wait for specified number of seconds which we studied in the previous example also that it waits for some seconds and it exit terminates so this is used when you want to switch a process or when you want to pass a signal that time sleep api is used sleep api is used for making a process wait or sleep for specified number of seconds the seconds are nothing but which is nothing but the arguments passed in the sleep api okay so this returns zero or number of unslept seconds so what does this function do now this function causes the calling process to suspend until so whenever the sleep api is called it makes the calling process to suspend till two ways one is the amount of all clock specified by the second has elapsed the time which is specified is elapsed or a signal is called by the process as the signal handler returns so please remember the sleep in the exam the last only this much explain the sleep api sleep api with the syntax so sleep api is used to make a process wait or suspend for specific amount of seconds and those seconds are nothing but the argument specified in sleep api so whenever a sleep api is executed it makes the process to wait until the time which is specified here is elapsed or any signal is called by the signal handler 
for example if i say sleep 60 you will be on the output screen till 60 seconds by doing nothing it does nothing for me after that it executes after that it executes let's see this also practically how exactly this working for me now now i'll say here pwd but before this i'll say here sleep 20 let's see how this executes now i should display with output but it is not displaying sleep because it is making the process to wait for the specified number of duration which was specified by me because I, before system api i had called sleep api now what is sleep is doing it is making the calling process wait for 20 seconds and after 20 seconds it automatically displayed this result from see here if i make this i'll just close this of this all sample programs are sufficient okay you don't have to refer to the textbook programs to display this now if i do this okay, within no time it is showing me on the output screen yeah but same thing if i call this it will wait for those amount of seconds i'll just reduce the duration i'll say it 5 so it will display the output after 5 seconds because you made the calling process to wait now it is waiting in two ways either it can wait for 5 seconds okay i'll just give a practical example here now first thing is i'll say 20 okay that means it should wait for 20 seconds okay so what happens here is it is waiting for 20 seconds for process to get the control after that it is executing the pwd system call so this is a simple example of sleep API. Okay, we understood what is about. We understood what is a system. System is used to execute the commands in the source code. Okay, which your command is specified executes that. If it is not a command, it throws an error. Then we said about sleep API. It makes the process to wait for specific duration of time. That's it. Nothing more in this API is over here. Kill, signal, sleep, and all. Okay. The last concept here. of the signals okay because as i said the fourth unit consists of two chapters one is signals and the other one is demon process so this is the last concept of signals now what are interval timers okay uh, now we all know now what is sleep and how a sleep is constructed you can construct a sleep with alarm and pause it okay. sorry i have just made a spelling mistake here it is alarm and sleep api But what does sleep do? We all know now. Sleep will suspend a process for fixed amount of time. So other than this, alarm API can be also used to set up interval timers. We know now interval timers, alarm. Okay. See, sleep API suspends for some amount of time. But apart from that, you can also use alarm API, which is used to set up an interval timer. Now, what is an interval timer? It is used to schedule a process. to do some tasks at a fixed time interval to do some tasks at a fixed time interval that means your process is running but in meanwhile you can schedule a process to do some task at specified interval timer see the very simple example is your classes are going on now you have a break of 15 15 minutes right so that is an interval time for you so in a process also you can schedule a process interval timer now what does a interval timer will help it will help the process to do some other task only for that specific duration of time after the time gets over you can again revert back it that is what alarm is right so same thing the alarm api which is used here the same thing in unix you have again two more functions which is called as get i timer and set i timer now get i timer which has again two arguments which will tell me to get the timer value which are you specify and set is to set the timer value the value which you specify is set the interval timer is set by set i timer and get i timer will do the task which is set by set i timer 
now eye timer as i said here this it is a structure it has two member functions one is the first member function is the it underscore interval that is the next value in the timer function what is the next value it should execute in the timer function and the second member is the current value which specifies whether the timer is set at the current value or to the next value and this is time evaluation is nothing but which specifies the seconds either you can specify the time in seconds or you can specify the time in microseconds so this is also similar to sleep api but in sleep api we specify the timers in seconds whereas here we specify the timer in microseconds only that's the difference over here and again as i said here now you have the third one the various values are one is i timer real which is nothing but it decrements its real time and delivers sig alarm upon expiration so whenever the signal is expiring it sets this i timer flag and executes a sig alarm you have again i timer underscore virtual which means that it decrements only the process is executing and delivers sig interval upon expiration that means whenever a process is executing it decrements only the execution of the process which is being executed and at the same time it delivers the sig alarm for its expiration and the last one is i timer for proof which means that it decrements both the process when the process executes and also when the system is executing on behalf of process because when a process is executing there is a system call also which is being executed by itself so whenever a system executes it decrements the process execution time also as well as the system execution time also on behalf of the process and what it does it is usually used to profile the time spent by the application in the user and kernel space because in the very first chapter we studied the context switching takes place which means that it records the time that is that the application spends in executing in the user mode as well as executing in the kernel mode so here you don't have to remember more thing only remember that interval timers are similar to sleep only sleep only but they can be executed or they can be evaluated in unix by the two system call that is get i timer and set i timer so this entire chapter what we said about signal is maximum about syntax is only signals is maximum about syntax is not like the previous what we studied introduction files processes okay the signal chapter is more all about in the exam so maximum time they ask syntax is an expression of it okay so this completes your signal chapter okay again there is a other half which is very interesting demon processes and this completes your signal chapter so what are the questions we can ask here like this so these are some simple questions what we can ask for you what is signal api explain the various signal names and the purposes which i told in the very first chapter okay we'll go back to this again now the various what is signal api and the various signals okay i'll just take you to here because this chapter is a bit confusing also for you people okay so see here what is signal api so you should tell what is a signal signal api and the various signals now these are the various signals name and their description if it is asked for eight marks you can tell the name any eight name and its description that way you can tell it similarly you have sorry your what is signal mask explain the syntax with sample program explain the sig action api the various ways in which process can handle the different handling signals when a child process terminates or stops that is what when a parent system when a child terminates or stops parent can accept the default action accept the default ignore the signal or ex can call a user defined function again they can ask explain sig set jump and sig long jump functions what is kill and alarm api write down order interval timers what we studied explain the various signal set sig empty set sig add set sig delete set all that we studied here i'll can just show you here that is what we studied here
this one. These are the various signal sets: SIG empty set, SIG fill set, SIG add set, and SIG delete set. These are just sample questions, okay? Because you may be unaware about like how questions can be asked for this unit, this chapter. Not these are not the questions itself, but this is the way they can ask you, okay? This. So the next class, which we'll continue. is very interesting or demons are very interesting to be understood and one more thing students uh, probably next week that is the next thursday coming thursday we have arranged a guest talk for you where now you people will understand you are studying unix but where unix is used in real time how you can make your career in unix so i am calling a person from ibm who will highlight you more about the industry aspects now see what we are studying here is only theoretical aspects but how unix is used in industry what are the scopes are there apart from your normal programming language what can you do in unix is what i have arranged on thursday that is a coming thursday 10 o'clock so make sure that please you do attend for that it's a very interesting session for you also okay now doubts over that if no doubts please give me this attendance for here Okay, I require only twenty-two attendants in that. Okay, not more than that, because I'll just in this recording, I'll just scroll like this. This will tell me who I have attended for my session now. Yeah, because it's in recording. This will keep me a track, also. Okay. So if no doubts, you can leave the class. So from the Monday's class, we'll start demons. Now demons are very interesting. Signals was more about uh, syntaxes only. Even I can understand that. everywhere you had syntaxes to be explained there because you can't